Good afternoon. If you could please stand and turn your attention to the back of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. I bless the cremated remains of Doris Prochnow, recalling her baptism of which St. Paul writes that those of us who have died with Christ will also rise with him. On the day of her baptism, Doris put on Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, may she be clothed in glory. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have set a limit to this present life so as to open up an entry into eternity, we humbly beseech you that by the grace of your mercy you may command the name of your servant, Doris Prochnow, to be inscribed in the book of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings from Scripture. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything and a time for every affair under the heavens. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot the plant. A time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them time to embrace, and a time to be far from embraces. A time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What advantage has the worker from his toil? I have considered the task which God has appointed for men to be busied about. He has made everything appropriate to its time and has put the timeless into their hearts without men's ever discovering from beginning to end the work which God has done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. is my 
shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death. should wander the valley of death. I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff are my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death. Shepherd me. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. So we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk with, by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, you also have faith in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Please be seated for a moment. <clears throat> On behalf of Holy Family Parish and myself, I certainly want to offer my prayerful support to you, Jack, and to Doris's sons, Mark, his wife, Virginia, Stephen and Imelda, Jeffrey and Susan, Tom and Elizabeth, Eric and Sally, Michael and Barbara, and John, and 12 great grandchildren. 12 grandchildren and eight great grandchildren. Marvelous family. Certainly you remember, and we remember today in prayer, Cynthia and Denise and Kimberly. We know that uh, they are joined now with Doris in God's kingdom. The first reading from Book of Ecclesiastes speaks volumes of Doris Prochnow's life for 89 years. She saw lots of good times and she saw difficult times as well. She saw a beautiful family be raised and she lost uh, Cynthia, Denise, Kimberly. She saw their loss and sadness. She enjoyed life here at the Holy Family Parish and in Stowe Monroe Falls. This has been her base throughout her whole life. And she had a wonderful time here. She enjoyed her youth. She enjoyed her young marriage with Jack. She enjoyed the arrival of each of their children, and eventually their grandchildren. She enjoyed so many things about their adventures, and their schooling, and the various activities, sports, and so on but she was able to participate in many ways. She helped in lots of ways, in parent clubs and, and the uh, volunteering in the school, helping with the sports and, and cheering people on, the scouts and all those kinds of activities. Uh, that was an exciting time for Doris. We know that in time, she decided to go back to work and she uh, came to work at Holy Family Parish where we've, we appreciated her guidance and her help in the office. She was the face of Holy Family for many people as they came to the office for various uh, appointments with the priests and, and uh, requests for baptism certificates and all those kinds of things that happen at a parish office. She was a gentle and kind and joyful presence. She was truly a joy-filled missionary disciple to provide that uh, welcome to people as they came. I heard that uh, she was kind to the young priests. I happened to notice on the condolences with the obituary that David Brandt had sent you a note uh, of condolence, and he remarked how Doris was such a kind and gentle presence in his life during his time here. And that is so important. You know, the priests uh, very often rely on the secretary uh, as kind of a mother figure. So, you know, we're kind of a male society, 
uh, bachelors and so on. And so uh, the secretaries of Doris's generation and certainly Doris's personality helped to soften that image and helped to uh, be a listening ear, uh, a person who uh, brought a certain kindness and gentleness into the rectory living situation. Since I came here 18 years ago, I've heard many, many people claim to have been friends of Father Archibald. But I've come to understand that there were many people who claimed to be his friends. And then there were people that knew what kind of scotch he drank. And then there were people like Doris who not only knew the brand of scotch, but had it on hand in the cabinet above the refrigerator and knew how many ice cubes he wanted in the glass. Doris really knew Father Archibald and she was knew uh, and was very loyal to Father Zabo who followed him and uh, certainly set the tone for our parish office and we appreciate that. The second reading from Corinthians tells us that we are given a place in God's kingdom, a dwelling not made with hands, but it's eternal in heaven. And we trust that Doris is receiving that uh, entrance into that kingdom as we speak. God has built for her a place. And as the gospel says, I'm in my father's house, there are many dwelling places. Otherwise, how could I have told you I was going to prepare a place for you? Jesus has prepared a place for Doris. There's many dwelling places. There's, there's plenty of room, but there's a particular place just for Doris. And we know that that's when she will meet again her daughter, her daughter-in-law, her granddaughter. We know that they will together await our coming to the kingdom someday. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. Otherwise, how could I have told you I'm going to prepare a place for you? Doris loved to prepare a place. She did that most especially in her home where she prepared along with Jack a place for her eight children. She prepared that place where they were always welcome, where their friends were always welcome, where the friends of their friends were always welcome. She prepared uh, the afternoon lunch with the same care and enthusiasm that she prepared Thanksgiving dinner and she welcomed all to her table. Even in the last several weeks, she continued to welcome people who were able to visit. As we know COVID has pre prevented a lot of those kind of visits, but the people who were able to visit were welcomed and encouraged to take some hospitality, even if just iced tea or something like that. She wanted to be of service. She carried on that service in Holy Family Parish. As she retired from being secretary, she took over the responsibility of funeral lunches and with a number of other uh, friends, ladies from the parish, they created a, a group of teams to uh, offer bereavement lunches for families. I found that Doris was always uh, embracing the opportunity to do that. You know, you'd get a call from the funeral director on a Sunday afternoon and they'd say, well, we need to have a funeral on Wednesday morning. Can you do that? Well, I would say yes. And then, and they want to have a, a luncheon. We've even had people call and say, do you offer lunches for your funerals? And before COVID, we were able to say yes. And they said, oh, well, good. Then we're going to have the funeral at Holy Family. The lunches were famous. And as I said, I would call Doris and she embraced the possibility. I even remember one time I called her on Christmas Eve to tell her that there was a funeral that was scheduled for two days after Christmas. So, you know, you can figure Christmas Eve, family coming over, Christmas, all the excitement of that. Stores probably closed on the day after. 
and then the next day was going to be the funeral, and they wanted a lunch for 75 people. I expected to have her say, oh, Father, that's really going to be hard to do. No, she immediately said, well, okay, how many is that? 75, what time? Are you going to the cemetery? Which cemetery are you going to? And all this, she wanted all the details. And on Christmas Eve, she's planning for the funeral lunch. She and the other ladies really provided a, a wonderful service, and we hope that that can begin again. And it is such an irony that it's not possible uh, today. But we're grateful for that way in which Doris was the face of Holy Family, not only as people came to the rectory office, but then in later years as they came uh, in their sadness, in their sorrow, and were uh, greeted with kindness and hospitality. Thomas said to Jesus, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? I think there's a difficulty for many of us as we bury someone as kind and as well known for her goodness as Doris is. We can say, well, I don't measure up to that. I'm not like that. I, I'm not as uh, good as that. People of her children's generation might think, you know, I'm, I'm not even halfway there. How am I going to uh, be like that and, and do what God wants me to do? Am I doing enough? Am I committed enough to the Lord to be willing to give in such generosity? Well, that's the kind of question Thomas was asking. Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? He's asking those questions that we ask. How do we do this? Am I on the right track? How do we get to the Lord? How do we become as good a person as Doris has been? And that's where it's good to recognize what Jesus says. He doesn't say to Thomas, Thomas, you've lost it. You, you just uh, are too far behind. It's hopeless. You didn't pay attention in religion class or you'd know the answer to that. You know, you're not as religious as the other disciples are or you'd have the answer. He doesn't embarrass Thomas. He doesn't highlight his inadequacy. Jesus simply says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we're asked to come to the Lord. Maybe we take good example from Doris. Maybe we can do the kind of things that she did. Maybe our circumstances cause us to have a whole different way of coming to the Lord. Whatever it is, this day should cause us not to feel inadequate, but rather to feel empowered, to know that the Lord guides each and every one of us uh, to take the opportunities that he gives us to seize those opportunities and to employ those on behalf of others. That's how we come to the Lord. And I am the way, the truth, and the life is Jesus' gentle way of telling us, just follow me. That's all you need to do. Let us pray that we can follow the Lord so that one day we can uh, gather in God's kingdom with Doris and all those who have gone before us who have loved us and who will await our arrival there in God's kingdom. Please stand for the prayers of the faithful. Is there someone designated for this? I, I'm not sure. Okay, well, that's fine. Lord God, we present these needs and petitions to you, asking that you keep these petitions in your care. For Doris, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Doris, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, 
that she may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Doris, that they may be consoled in their sadness and grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our family and friends who have died, and for all who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, suffering, or poor, that God might guide us to help them in their need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh, good and loving God, we pray these petitions, asking that you keep them and us in your gentle care. We pray this through Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Doris Prochnow, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful, O Lord, life is changed and not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God, of, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory, glory. Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel or be seated as you wish. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them 
like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward Molesic, our Bishop, and all the clergy, the religious, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please stand if you wish. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away sins of the world, 
grant us peace.
Is there a reflection? Oh, okay, yes. I'd like to say I'm honored to uh, have been asked to give these awards for uh, Jack and the family. Honored and humbled. Let me give you a uh, small look into how Doris was and what amazing moment she was. We know she was born right here, right in this very area. She grew up with her whole, for her whole life near her family and the loved ones. Doris married the love of her life, Jack. Jack Brock now. And they enjoyed a happy marriage of over 70 years. Doris and Jack did everything together. They were inseparable. A quality seldom seen anymore. Certainly an enduring commitment, most rare. To Doris, family was her top priority. And she truly loved all of her family. She kept a deep connection with them. When one was hurting or down, she was right there with them, feeling their triumphs and their sorrows. She had a knack for making you feel like you were not in it alone. She was with you. In today's words, she had your back. She was a truly unselfish listener. She was always concerned about others. She was never self-promoting. Doris was a mother of eight children. We've heard this. Seven of those were boys. The first four, only a year apart. Growing up in a large Catholic family myself, I can assure you that would surely qualify for her for sainthood without a doubt. Surely those lads kept their on her toes. It was a family story about snakes. The boys had pet snakes, they liked them. Doris was terrified of snakes. Once one of the snakes escaped into the basement. The boys couldn't find the snakes. Who knows what they told their mother but it was forgotten till later when Doris reached into a sack of potatoes and there was that snake. Like any good mother, she was a trooper and just shook it off. Thank God for mothers, for her fathers would have killed us all. However, like all mothers, she could deliver those unforgettable bone chilling words. Just wait till your father gets home. Another story from the boys, Doris had a neighbor friend who would come over every day about four o'clock, sneak a smoke break. Well, one of the boys thought it would be funny to put a ladyfinger firecracker into the cigarette, which of course exploded when lit. The friend told Doris to sue the cigarette company, but Doris saw the boy's finger, one of the boys' fingerprints on that deed. Any of y'all uh, care to confess? One thing for sure, I'll bet there was a time when, on later that Doris wished Jack had started that winemaking hobby just a little bit sooner. In their later years, Doris and Jack loved to take their trips to Jekyll Island in Georgia and be with family. It was their favorite place to vacation, the highlight of their year. She loved it there, looked forward to going each and every time. Doris's Catholic faith, faith was an important part of who she was, and her life exemplified that fact. She was grateful for her family and friends. She provided sacrificial love, wise guidance, constant support, especially during life's most difficult moments. Doris, we thank God that you were a part of our lives. You will truly be missed. Give Cindy, Mike, Barb, Ronnie, and Denise a big hug from all of us. Godspeed.
Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Doris Prochnow may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We just prayed that Doris receive the food for the journey and that now she is in God's kingdom. We as Catholics speak of viaticum, which is the communion that one receives shortly before one's death. With COVID and the restrictions on visiting, that hasn't been as possible, but I know that at least a few weeks ago when I was there to give communion, I would consider that Doris's viaticum. Viaticum means literally via the journey, T, you, cum is with. So with you for the journey, literally is what it means. And uh, that food for the journey, that Eucharist, is what Doris uh, enjoyed for probably 80 years since her first communion and was continually here at church until COVID hit, and uh, then she was able to take that Eucharist in recent uh, weeks uh, as she goes to God. Certainly, that Eucharist has been a blessing for her, and I think this is a reminder to us of what that Eucharist can and should be for each of us. Let us pray. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive, Receive her soul. soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul, present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto Doris, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul, present her to God the Most High. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Doris Prochnow, your servant. In the sight of this world she has died, but in your sight may she live forever. Forgive whatever sin she may have committed through him in weakness, and in your goodness grant her everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
we're going to now go over to Stowe Cemetery. I believe uh, just the family is going there, uh, but uh, please be very careful if you're walking across the street. The cars are coming much faster than you think they are, and so you need to be very careful. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go now in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.